Hello everyone, my name is Peter Stanich. I'm a gastroenterologist here at the Ohio State University Wexford Medical Center and the James Comprehensive Cancer Center. I'm excited to be able to talk to everyone today about colon cancer screening. Um, we do know colon cancer is the third most common cancer in both men and women. The, the risk um, for an American is about 5% in the lifetime. And even though you know 5% sounds like a low number, I think I would venture to guess that most of us know someone affected by colon cancer. And we do know that the, the rates uh, in, of colon cancer in young people are going up. And so one of the major things I wanna to talk to everyone today about is a new recommendation in the guidelines. So when we think about colon cancer screening, the first thought is to break it down into average risk people and high risk people. So average risk is when you have no family history of colon cancer or high risk colon polyps. High risk is where we consider a first degree relative, so uh, um, a sibling or a parent or a child who's had colon cancer or high risk colon polyps. And so I'll discuss different recommendations for average risk people and high risk people. One important note is that if you have symptoms that could be consistent with colon cancer, that includes new abdominal pain, blood in the stool, dark black tarry stools, or what we call melanic stools, all of that takes you out of that, those risk categories and when you have symptoms, that is something you need to discuss uh, with your doctor and likely you'll need a colonoscopy sooner than the ages that we'll discuss today. And so it is something where even though we'll talk about you know, ages to start, it's always something where we want to be very mindful of any symptoms that may be suggestive of colon cancer or other gastrointestinal issues. So make sure you talk, talk this over with your doctor and make sure that they agree with the recommendations we'll discuss today. So as I mentioned, there's new guidelines for average risk patients for colon cancer screening, and these have been in the news lately. Hopefully you all have heard about it, um, but we have changed the, the recommended age to start colon cancer screening to age 45. So for a long time we said age 50, but now we're recommending starting at age 45. The reason for this change is that we know that the colon cancer risk in young people under the age of 50 has been going up over the last 10 to 15 years. The reason for that is not exactly clear. There's a lot of you know, scientists and doctors working on identifying the reasons for that. You know, part of that we think is potentially you know, diet and obesity, but certainly that's not the only reason. Um, and unfortunately, we haven't been able to pinpoint all of the reasons why this is happening. Uh, we do know that even though there are unfortunately 20 and 30 year olds who are diagnosed with colon cancer, that thankfully is still very rare. But in 40 year olds and particularly 45 to 49 year olds, that risk had been going up. And actually current day, the risk in 45 to 49 year olds is very similar to where it was for 50 year olds when we started colon cancer screening. So with that change to age 45, our hope and, and the prediction is that we'll see a decreased risk for colon cancer in, in, those, in those people, just like we have seen for those over 50 getting screening for a long time. Um, and so we know colon cancer screening is effective, and now we just need to shift it earlier um, to age 45 to start to see that benefit in more people. So there are multiple modalities for colon cancer screening. Um, when you think about that in kind of one step versus two step tests. So the tried and true method, you know, as a gastroenterologist, what's near and dear to my heart is colonoscopy. So probably everyone has, has heard about a colonoscopy. That's where we take a long, flexible camera and we go through the large intestine or what we call the colon, and we look for any polyps that are, which are kind of growths in the colon that can potentially turn into cancer. And we know when we remove those polyps, we reduce your risk for colon cancer. We also know that we can find colon cancer early with this modality before it's spread, and then you can have surgery and potentially other treatments and still save lives. The other testing that's approved um, is, is also very good. We know it still saves lives but it's a two-step process where you have the test and then you need a colonoscopy to follow up on the results if that test is abnormal. That includes stool-based testing, um, like a multi-target stool DNA or a cologuard test, or a fecal immunochemical or a FIT test, um, which are two common stool-based tests. Or there is a radiologic test called a CT colonography or virtual colonoscopy that's also approved. So colonoscopy, you know, is helpful because if we see polyps, we can remove them and we know we prevent colon cancer as well as detect colon cancer early. 
there are some downsides. There is the bowel prep, which everyone kind of, you know, probably knows about and has heard people complain about, where you have to drink a large volume of fluid um, and have terrible diarrhea that day and get cleaned out. But then we can really see small polyps and remove them and, and reduce that risk. And that is a very, very important part of the process. Then also it's a procedure. So you'll get sedation, you'll need a driver to bring you home, and there is some risk, even though it's very low risk, um, involved with that. Whereas the stool-based test or the uh, radiologic test, the CT colonography, you can do that without sedation, you know, without a driver. And when you complete those tests, if you're negative, then depending on which test you choose there, you can go one to three years until you have to do it again. The benefit of a colonoscopy, if you do that test and your average risk and you don't have any polyps, you can go 10 years until your next procedure. And we do know that colonoscopy is protective for over, over 10 years, up to 12 years. And so it is something where if you have one good colonoscopy, you can really you know, show that you have a reduced risk for some time. Um, we do know that all these tests reduce the risk. And so really, you know, have to talk with your doctor, pick the test that works best for you and that, you know, that you've decided to come to with your doctor. Now, let's say you're high risk. Let's say you have a family history of colon cancer and a parent or a sibling. Um, in that case, it's a little bit different where usually we would recommend starting at age 40 or 10 years before your relative. So let's say you know you had a parent who developed colon cancer at 55, we would recommend starting at age 40, but if your parent developed colon cancer at age 45, we would recommend you start at age 35. So the, the latest we would start is 40, but you may need to be um, have colonoscopy sooner than that. And we don't recommend the stool-based testing for people who are high risk. So for people who are increased risk, we clearly recommend colonoscopy so we can find polyps and reduce that risk. And then depending on your findings and age of the relative, uh, likely the interval that will be recommended will be five years, although there's still, there's some people that need shorter and some people that need longer. But kind of the standard for higher risk patients is every five years. Okay, and the benefit, as I mentioned, we know colon cancer screening is effective. We know that the colon cancer um, risk in people over age 50 that have been undergoing screening have been dropping since we started doing colon cancer screening. So we're excited to be able to bring that to a kind of a, a younger tier of, of patients. Um, with that, we know that we need to do very effective screening. So, you know, certainly, you know, getting screened is a most important first step. But then the next step is what's the best screening and how do we make colonoscopy even more effective? And we're very excited uh, about some new techniques that are available at the James and the, at Ohio State Wexner Medical Center. One of those is what we call computer-aided detection. This is really, you know, seems like the future, um, but there's a, a machine um, that's FDA approved now that basically is a real-time real computer read of the screen that helps endoscopists and, and doctors performing endoscopy find polyps. And so, um, what it does is the computer also looks at the screen and, and will help notify the endoscopist by putting a box around a potential polyp. And so although you know, we know that doctors are very, very good at finding polyps, I think we all know that people aren't perfect. And if we can help find a few more polyps you know, over the course of a day or a week, that's going to be a reduced risk for colon cancer after colonoscopies. And we're certainly excited to be able to you know, provide that to our patients. We're currently you know, trialing this product and um, having a lot of um, interesting results and good success with it. Um, and so things like this are just gonna become more and more common. You know, certainly we're at the, at the time where we know that screening is effective and now we're gonna optimize it and make sure that it's the most effective for our patients. And so once again, just a, a quick summary. I appreciate all of your attention. You know, I appreciate you sharing this with anyone who you think, you know, is late on colon cancer screening. You know, if you've had your colonoscopy, but you know, your brother or your sister or, or your uncle or aunt or mom or dad hasn't, please share this with them and hopefully we can get a few more people screened. Because um, we know in the United States we're doing a good job at colon cancer screening, but we could do better and get more people. Remember that we now recommend starting at age 45 for average risk patients. Um, so if you're you know, 47, it's your time. If you're 48 now, it's your time. And even though you probably thought you had an extra couple of years until you need to get started, we've kind of pulled, you know, we would recommend you get started now. And then if you're at increased risk, if you have a family history of colon cancer, you probably need to start even earlier at age 40. So please make sure you discuss that with your doctor. And then as always, if you're having any concerning symptoms, abdominal pain, 
low blood counts or what we call iron deficiency anemia, certainly blood in the stool. Please make sure you discuss that with your doctor as soon as possible because those are all high risk markers where you will need that looked into. Thank you again for your time and attention.